Good morning, Borneo. Look at a lovely day is today. Sun is shining. It's a short day today. We are going back to the passes. We're going to do the Stelvio Pass again, the Umbrailio Pass. The same thing, but from the other side. And uh, it's going to be a very short day, as I said. We all together, maybe two hours and a half, and then we will relax in our lovely hotel. We found a very nice restaurant down the street over there, somewhere to the left. <laughs> Italian Territoria, which is extremely good. And uh, we are going to visit it again today, this evening. Motorcycles are ready. We are all, we already uh, filled the tanks. So we are ready to go. Let's hit the road. Full day was designed to be a show day and dedicated for one of the most famous passes in the world, the Stelvio Pass. We rode up the mountain back to the beautiful Umbrella Pass where we turned east towards the Stelvio Pass and all the way down to Switzerland and back again. We are riding the same road we did yesterday, this time we are going up. So it's more of the same but on the other way. It uh, just we encountered a few aliens here with very low technology. I don't know where did they come from, but they look very unhappy and uh, working very hard. This is very strange. I don't know what it is. They're also riding something with two wheels, but it doesn't have a motor. Or maybe they have one, I don't know, but you cannot see it. So either that they are very sophisticated or they are very... Uh, I don't want to say that. Never mind. Let's enjoy the road. Come on. Stelvio Pass. The Stelvio Pass is a mountain pass in the northern Italy bordering Switzerland at the elevation of 2,757 meters. It is the highest paved mountain pass in the Eastern Alps and the second highest in the Alps. The pass is located between Stelvio and Bormio. It is about 75 kilometers from Bolzano and 200 meters from the Swiss border. The Umbriel Pass runs northward from the Stelvio's western ramp and the three languages peak above the pass is so named because this is where the Italian, German and Roman language speaking areas meet. The original road was built in 1820 by the Austrian Empire to connect the former Austrian province of Lombardy with the rest of Austria, covering a climb of 1,871 meters. Since then, the roads were changed very little. It's 75 hairpin turns, 48 of them on the northern side numbered with stones are challenged to motorists. Before the end of World War I, it formed the border between the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Italian Kingdom. The Swiss had an outpost and a hotel, which was destroyed, on the three-language peak. During World War I, fierce battles were fought in the ice and snow of the area, with gunfire even crossing the Swiss area at times. The Stelvio Pass remains important for sport when it is open from May through November. Countless cyclists and motorcyclists struggle to get to the highest stretch of road in the Eastern Alps. It is the highlight finish of any Grand Tour. This is that the better the weather is getting and the conditions, it becomes even more dangerous because there are so many motorcycles here now. So it's fully packed and crowded, and some of them are really riding in a crazy way. Okay, somebody is taking pictures. Okay, okay. it's time to hit the Stelvio Pass, this time for real. The Stelvio Pass continues from here. We are currently riding into the snow temperature here is 10.5 degrees we're going down and uh, this is the actual Stelvio Pass we are going to pass back to Switzerland and then back again 
Wow, this is beautiful view. Your pass. It's crowded, packed with motorcycles. Not a nice place to stop, but many other people would think differently. <laughs> the members are scattered all over the place. Okay, let's wait for them. Bye bye Stelvio Pass It was worth being here Wow this is beautiful Look at this The snake that is going down All the way to Switzerland Approaching the end of the Stelvio Pass in which I made a heroic fall somewhere up there found myself in front of a big car in the turn so there wasn't much left to do but to fall down hopefully I think I have no injuries the motorcycle looks functioning well there were a few people there to help me bring it back up and uh, the whole incident took a few uh, minutes, I guess. I think the uh, clutch lever is uh, broken in the usual place, which is a minor thing. So far, looks like everything is okay. I will have, uh, when we will get down, I will check the motorcycle, see if there is any further damage, but I don't think there is any. Anyway, it happened in zero speed, which was a good thing. 
the view is still stunning. As I and my mighty GS didn't sustain any serious damage due to the heroic, stupid and completely unnecessary fall, it was only logic to go on riding all the way to Switzerland and back through the same road of yesterday to the Umbrail Pass. The Umbrail Pass looked very much like home at that stage, so it was a very easy and fast ride back to our hotel in Borneo. So, if you liked this video, please give us big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below, and we will see you in our next episode.